Irian Jaya, with its brooding jungles, untold riches, and ancient tribal cultures, is one of the world's last frontiers. Less than 60 years ago, American explorer Richard Archbold made his historic flight over these jagged mountain peaks. As his giant Catalina flying boat rose above yet another ridge, an immense valley was revealed below. What it contained was breathtaking. A civilization, some 75,000 strong and totally unknown to the outside world, the Dani of the Ballium Valley. It wasn't until the mid-1950s that there was any foreign presence here when small bands of missionaries began to arrive. The town of Wamana has now sprung up around the airstrip the missionaries built. That piece of asphalt is still the only link with the outside world. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Catholic priest Father Franz Leishardt came here as a young man. He was part of the first wave of Europeans to make contact with the Dani and has spent his adult life among them. In the beginning, they did not accept anything of us. They didn't need us. They didn't ask for us. You can't bring these people something when they don't see the needs. Now you can say after uh, 35 years, they didn't change anything. It is the same at all. The past few decades may not have brought much cultural change to the valley, but the forces which govern it have shifted dramatically. time, the Dani people mightn't have known about it, but in the mid-1960s, Indonesia wrested control of Irian Jaya away from the Dutch. In a bountiful river valley, Dani elder Yowino Itlai and his fellow villagers are digging a new vegetable garden. In Yowino's language, the expression for digging potatoes from the earth is the same as giving birth to a child. Always handled gently, some women say they can sometimes hear the unearthed potatoes calling out to them. Like indigenous peoples everywhere, ties with the land transcend the merely practical. Land and its bounty are a central part of the Dani's spiritual life. Land is for these people like a mother who gives all what they need. All what they need, they get from, from their land. The, not only the sweet potatoes, but also the pigs. Um, and uh, also the, themselves. They tell you that they, in the beginning, came from, from the earth, yes. And um, they have a very great respect for land. 
What would happen if you took the Dani away from their land? Oh, they will die. <laughs> Despite the best efforts over the years of missionaries, of Dutch and Indonesian bureaucrats to change these people, they've managed to survive with their culture still intact. But now the Iranese are facing new pressures which they'll find much tougher to withstand. With its vast forests, fertile land and potential mineral wealth, the highlands are an alluring but remote prize. The mountains which have shielded the people of Yawino's village for so long are now drawing the world towards them to reap the wealth those beaks contain. Snaking its way from the capital Jayapura in the north and the town of Meroki in the south, a trans irian road is expected to be completed in two years' time. It will cut right through Dani land. In anticipation of the road's completion, logging and mining companies have already laid claim to massive concessions here. But the Dani may not have much choice. You need only look across the mountains for a foretaste of what road access might bring to these people. It's in the coastal areas, which are more accessible, where the results of the central government's policies can be most clearly seen. In many of these areas, indigenous people have already been overwhelmed by migrants and development. Some 700,000 migrants have settled here, making up between 30 to 40 percent of the population. And still more people are coming. The Indonesian government has undertaken a program to transmigrate and move people from Java to the outer islands, mainly because Java is now one of the most crowded or densely populated areas in the world. Transmigration camps like this one in Timika, carved out of traditional hunting grounds, dot the coastal areas of Irian Jaya. Wherever there's road or boat access, migrants can be found. Abdul Rossad came here four years ago. He was given a basic house, two hectares of land and a boat fare to start a new life away from overcrowded Java. Jadi ini kan sudah ditentukan dari atasan supaya untuk taraf hidup kita keturunan di sini jadi jiwa Irian Jaya untuk dari atasan ke sini itu dari bapak kita ini kan untuk menjadikan satu ke sini supaya kita keturunan di sinilah begitu. Bagaimana hubungan Bapak dengan orang Irian? Kalau sama saya itu ndak punya acara apa-apa gitu ya gitu soal gitu perhubungan saja tanya menanya untuk kita itu jadi ndak ada kita ini seolah-olah menuntut ah ini tanah saya tak ini bagaimana gitu kan tidak ada karena dia pun sudah tahu karena ini peraturan program pemerintah itu Pak But the local Komoro people aren't so sanguine. The land used for the transmigration camps here once belonged to them. 
Their former nomadic existence, living off fishing and sago palms, gave them no rights under Indonesian land law. Nor did the Comoro have access to compensation for their traditional lands, now being used by outsiders. Marcus Okanapoka and his family have been consigned to resettlement villages like this one. <coughs> it's not just farmers that the Camaro have lost their land to, but also to the thousands of migrants drawn to the area in search of work at the nearby Freeport Gold and Copper Mine. Pemerintah dan Freeport, hutan pun sekarang mereka ambil itu sudah sudah cerita itu yang punya hutan kayu itu siapa punya mereka itu tebang sembarangan saja tanpa ada punya perundingan kepada yang punya pemilik akhirnya mereka tindak segala macam hal untuk menakutkan masyarakat. Looming high above the Comoros village is Mount Grasberg and these spectacular equatorial glaciers, home to the American mining giant Freeport McMorrin. This is the largest single deposit of copper and gold in the world. It's a multi-billion dollar bonanza for Freeport and the Indonesian government. And it looks like this is just the beginning. Much of the mountain spine of Irian Jaya appears to contain rich mineral deposits, and Freeport has recently expanded its concessions to cover two and a half million hectares. Other companies are now prospecting as well. Tom Biennale's tribe, the Amungme, are the traditional owners of the Freeport site, and like the Camorro, they too have lost much of their land, this time to the mine. Most of his people have been relocated from the mountains to the coastal town of Timika. We are living now in the land of the government, not in the land of our salad. Were you given any payment for that land? No, no, no. No, they didn't give it. Under Indonesian regulation, uh, direct money to individuals is not paid for hunting grounds, Tana Adat, traditional uh, lands that are used for hunting and gathering. Uh, rather, compensation is in the form of a community benefit, uh, a water well, a bridge, uh, a community center, uh, a school, uh, a health clinic, uh, something that will benefit the entire community itself or the, or the entire clan or tribe. Uh, all of which we have done. And we try very hard to be sensitive to the local people. Uh, whether the laws are, are, are appropriate or, or, or not is really not up to me to, to, to address. The Amungme can make requests, they can write letters, but they have no real redress on land issues. To assert land ownership or protest can carry grave risks. These Amungme people in the remote hamlet of Singa have been caught up in a guerrilla war between the military and those people fighting back against the loss of their land. In June of last year, the outlawed OPM's leader, Kili Kuali, began appearing in the district, sparking a swift and harsh crackdown from the armed forces. <laughs> Now, when 
According to the Catholic Church, houses were burnt down, vegetable gardens destroyed, and people were killed and beaten. Most of the villagers fled into the jungle and stayed there for months. The people of Singa now live under military occupation. Like other Amungme tribes, the army wants to move them away from their traditional land to the more densely populated lowlands. In a climate where people are loath to speak out for fear of retaliation, the village leader put his case to us. But the authorities have made plain their plans to relocate these people will go ahead. When the OPM raised another flag some months later at the mine site itself, the military's reaction was just as harsh, leading to reprisals which the Catholic Church says has resulted in the deaths of 16 people, including women and children. Others were tortured and still more have disappeared. The Army has a legitimate role of providing security throughout Indonesia, including our operation here. Does that include uh, shooting people uh, if they raise OPM flags? I think you better talk to the Army about that. Uh, the Army has an obligation to provide security for operations such as Freeport. That's their job. Uh, our job is to uh, mine, uh, mine this deposit here in the most effective way possible, and we're doing that. The Indonesian Human Rights Commission has since begun an investigation, and the government is awaiting its report before drawing any conclusions. This may be, uh, you know, very investigative reporting, and I think we're very, very interested to know what really happened. The uh, commander of the army has also made a statement earlier that uh, he will certainly punish those perpetrators who are the uh, cause of this problem. But these haven't been isolated incidents. Church and aid groups argue that too often, genuine grievances over development, especially over land rights issues, are dismissed by the armed forces as seditious. The Dani and people from other remote areas of Irian Jaya are facing major changes over the coming years. Be it migration, mining or logging, development is fast rolling back the frontiers of Irian Jaya and placing even greater pressures on a fragile local culture. It's a process which has had disastrous consequences for indigenous people in places like Australia and the United States now in Irian Jaya, it seems many of the same mistakes are being made again. Thank you.